What is up YouTube? It's Malorn here and I'm here with another great video for you guys today. I know it's been a really long time since you've seen me or heard me or got any kind of information from me on this channel whatsoever, but I am here to let you know that I am still alive. And this is an actual video, I'm not just letting you know that. Um, first off, before we begin and before I tell you what this video will be about, which actually I think you guys might like. It's going to be pretty interesting. I uh, recently got some new things in Wizard 101 that I'd like to show off, and um, I think you guys will really like it. But before we begin with that, I'd like you guys to know that I am going to be moving out soon. For those of you who don't know, I am still living with my parents. And I have been since I turned 18 last year. I turned 19 in March. Alright, and um, I'm going to be moving out here soon. You know, I'm moving out next month. Um, March 15th is the moving out date. I'm a little, I have to be completely honest with you, I am nervous. I am nervous as hell. Alright, this isn't something that I'm, that I can take lightly, you know, I'm, and pardon my language, but I am, I'm really nervous about it. Um, you know, I'm going to be out on my own, but here's the thing, whenever I move out, I'm not going to be getting, you know, getting an apartment or anything like that. I've done a lot of planning, I've done a lot of research to what I'm going to be doing, and, um, I'm going to be RV traveling all, you know, all around the country. Um, I'm going to ho hopefully, you know... I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a Starbucks around every corner around the country, so internet access won't be a problem. Um, I'll be able to upload videos still, is my point. You know, but the videos will have a slight change in content. I will still be uploading my, my audiobooks, I will still be uploading my uh, gameplays, but I'm also going to be doing travel vlogging. Now, part of the reason why, and I'm sad to say this, that I can't just kind of stick with what I'm doing right now. Um, I do need to monetize my channel. It needs to be monetized at some point. And with the new YouTube requirements of 1,000 subscribers, um, 1,000, what is it, 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of content in the last 12 months, something like that, I'm pretty sure. Um, I have to expand my content, you know, I have to get a bigger audience, and that doesn't mean that I need to kind of shun my old audiences. I will still be uploading Wizard 101, if, you're a, if you've watched any of my Command & Conquer videos, I'll still be uploading those. If you're an audiobook fan on my channel, I'll be uploading those. Um, you know, I'll still be doing all that, but there's going to be, you know, extra stuff involved too. So there's going to be travel vlogging. Maybe I'll do some more drink reviews. I haven't done any of those in a really long time. I might throw some snack reviews in there. I haven't done any of those yet. Uh, maybe some restaurant reviews too. You know, uh, just some extra stuff. You know, keep keep my channel growing, I guess. And I know that this isn't something you see on a lot of channels. You know, people usually they pick a category and they stick with it, right? But I feel like my channel this entire time has just kind of been a big mixture of stuff. And to be honest, at first, I didn't want to get up to a thousand subscribers, all right, because that, at the time, that seemed like a lot of effort to me, you know, maintaining a thousand subscribers and keeping interesting content for that many people. I wasn't, back then, I wasn't very good at this whole YouTubing thing. I didn't, um, if you go and watch some of my older videos, oh, oh Lord, they are so embarrassing. Um, I was just, I was not good. You know, the commentary on those videos was absolute garbage. It was terrible, all right? It was, oh, like, I go back and I watch some of my old videos. Some of them are okay, all right? Some of them are, you know, they're not bad. Others are just... Well, like, it's that bad. Like, I just want to throw up everywhere or turn into some alien and fly off in a UFO. I want to leave the planet. That's how bad some of those videos are. And then I have two videos of me dancing on this channel. Alright, me dancing to music. I am not a dancer. I do not know how to dance. <laughs> it was awful. Like, it is so cringy to watch. 
one of these one of these days I'll go back and I'll review some of my old videos and I do plan on making a review of those two videos specifically because there's only two of them but it is so bad and so hard to watch and at the time I thought I was good <laughs> anyways so without further ado let's go ahead and get this actual video started um, what we're going to be talking about today in the eight minutes before I have to leave for work is I got two new castles. We got the Darkmoor Manor and then I got the Nomad's Camp. All right, and I've actually, I've started decorating them a bit, but to be completely honest, the one that's the most decorated, the one that I've gotten farther with is the Nomad's Camp. It's just really easy to decorate. So we are going to take a look at the Nomad's Camp first because I know that there's some of you who, you know, you don't want to watch a really long video. So I want to go ahead and get the interesting stuff out of the way. That way, you know, after you watch that part, you don't have to continue. But if you want to, that's fine with me, you know. If you want to see what my Darkmoor castle looks like too. It's really not very decorated, but it does have some stuff in it. And I might go, in, you know, I can go into the explanation of what I plan on doing with it. Anyways, so here's the Nomad's Camp. And I've actually, I've been working on this one a lot. Uh, this one's been in progress for about a month now. I've had these castles for quite a while at this point. And I just, I don't know, I haven't gotten to uh, releasing any kind of information about them. I did have a video that I was planning to upload a month ago. And I decided against it because I got a little off topic in the video. So I decided against uploading it. Um, I'm thinking of adding, of making like a playlist for videos that I you know, really old videos that I decided against uploading, you know, like uh, cringy videos or just videos that weren't very well made. I'm not really sure how to explain it. Like, um, like videos I just generally decided not to upload as content related to that specific topic. So if it's Wizard 101 related and it was just a bad video or there was something kind of embarrassing in it, or maybe my voice accidentally cracked midway, you know, that kind of thing, and I decided, okay, I need to restart this. You know, I'll be making a um, playlist for those kind of videos so you can laugh at me and stare at me and think that I'm absolutely insane, because I am. Alright? <laughs> I do a lot of crazy things on videos that you don't see. Um, I usually try and be completely honest and be completely truthful with my channel. I don't hide much from you guys. But there are a few things that I just decided that the public is safer not knowing about, alright? Like, they will melt your brain. No, they won't actually do that, but they might make you want to laugh at me. And anyways. <laughs> okay, so I've been doing a lot of the uh, second spring with plants, because it's really cool, I like it. Um, you can use them as decorations. Basically, you have to wait till the plant gets to Elder. And then you can cast the spell on the plant and it makes it look like it's mature. Obviously, you can still walk up and you can still harvest it. And if you accidentally click, it kind of sucks because you end up getting rid of it and you have to replant it and do all that kind of work. But so long as you keep a safe distance and you just don't click X and you don't click on it, you know, you're, it's, it's fine. It's a decoration. Alright, so you can actually use seeds as decorations. That's been a thing for a while now. You know, they've had that for, I think... A little over a year it's been like what two updates now since they came out with that originally um, so as you can see I've got a red bell pepper and I've got a pink dandelion here I know that they don't really fit in with the environment but they were the easiest seeds to plant that I had available to me so I went ahead and I went with those and um, yeah that that's that happened I also have a lot of these I have a lot of house guests because anytime I buy a pack nowadays I get like two of these. You know, I could buy five packs in a row, and I'd probably end up getting like two or three of these little guys. They're not very rare, so when you buy a pack, you know, they're really easy to get. They drop a lot. Like, they're not rare items. Alright, it says uncommon, I think, whenever you get it, but uncommon in Wizard 101 is basically like, okay, you have to put a little bit of effort into this, but... Most likely, it's like a 60% chance of getting it, like, oh my god. We called it uncommon to make it seem more special. Oh, that That's uncommon. Alright. Um, also, if you go to the Nomads Camp, something I found out, if you're looking for, uh, what are they called? Uh, shining Scale Reagents, cast a Myth Lure 
scare away all the other fish except for the myths, except for the myth ones. Cast a bunch of myth lures, and you'll end up getting a lot of fishing chests. And in this castle, the chances of getting a, um, you know, a, a shining scale or whatever, they're actually pretty high. I've gotten a lot of them. Like I've got, I think, over ten now. And obviously, that's not a lot compared to the fact that I have like fifteen hundred stone blocks um, on my account, but. For shining scales, it is. It's a large number, because they're not very easy to get in general. Alright, now to actually go into detail with the castle, obviously we've got a bunch of tents, because this is the middle of a desert, and it's a nomad's camp. You can't have a camp with tents. Duh. So we've got a bunch of tents everywhere. I've got these little things kind of hanging up in the sun, letting their clothes dry off, you know. Yeah, obviously they've got to have dry clothes. We have to be nice to these people. We have a random gobbler pinata here. In case they get bored, or maybe they're starving and they need some Tootsie Rolls to, you know, maintain, like, a sufficient diet. I feel like that would be really bad for you, but I, honestly, I feel like that would do more harm than good if you just ate Tootsie Rolls in a survival starvation situation. I feel like that would be really bad. Oh, and I've got a random trumpet here, and obviously this is the trumpeteer's seat. He sits here, comes up, gets his trumpet, and hops on the stage and plays his little instrument. All right, all right. Alright, we've got this random cat lady sitting here staring at the fish, because why not? Oh, oh, she's dan oh, she's dancing. She is dancing. She is doing the I am going to eat you dance. Like, this fish don't stand a chance, man. As long as she's not taking my shining scales, I'm okay. Because I really need those. Actually, I really don't, because I've got plenty, but I really want those. I want all of them. This is our chef. Alright, this is our chef. Her name's Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Say hi. Say hi to the YouTubers, Catherine. Yeah, she doesn't talk much. She's actually pretty shy, but, you know, she's a really good cook. She likes to make cheese, apples, and turkey, as you can see. Um, honestly, if you want to try her soup, you can, but it's really not very good. Like, it's got mold and stuff in it, and she keeps putting cat food in it for some reason. It's really gross. Um, we've got a sandwich station here. She just kind of leaves the bread out, so the bread's always stale, but... Honestly, they still taste good. It's just really crunchy, so it's, you know, you gotta have really good teeth. Random circus tent, because why not? Oh, and I've got another plant that I plan on um, using the, um, what, what is it called? The second spring on it. I plan on using that on them. This guy is the mayor. He is the mayor of the town. He just kind of watches over from his tent. You know, we got a little fire here. Everyone's gotta stay warm. Uh, this is the crafting area. Alright, crafting area. This is the merchant. So the crafter and the chef, they make all the products, and then all the products come up here to her, and she sells them, because she is a really good businesswoman. Alright. <laughs> oh, and um, there's jewels everywhere. This island is loaded with jewels, so it's really easy to make money. Which is why lots of people want to come here, but they find that the environment is rather hostile. So they end up leaving before they have a chance to do anything. Alright, what else? They've got supplies everywhere. Because you can't, you know, you can't go into the desert without having stuff to, you know, survive off of. This over here, this dude's rich. So he's actually figured out a way to sell the jewels. And he managed to survive long enough to harvest them. And he's made a decent profit off of it. You can see he's got a really nice tent here. And he's got really nice chairs, some flowers. He's even got his own little library over here, man. I mean, it's pretty crazy. He's doing pretty well for himself. He's managed to, obviously, keep some plants alive. Which is impressive. He's got the money to do that. I mean, not many people around here do. He's got a bunch of those. Bunch of villagers living in there. You gotta watch out for these for this guy though. He haunts the area, just kinda he eats children. Alright, we're gonna go up here. Little water towers. They've gotta have some water, right? They gotta store some water. You also have to watch out for this guy right here, because he will chop your head off and he will steal your children. Seems to be a pretty common theme around this area. They love stealing your children, so keep your kids safe. And don't let them do drugs. Because drugs are bad. Alright. So this is just kind of an overview of the majority of the camp. So what it looks like from above. 
as you can see it's pretty safe and you've got this over here so these guys they're just I mean they're just the undead you know this guy right here is sad right because this this guy right here keeps bragging about how he won the chess game right so this guy just kind of sit, sits here and mopes the whole time like cry baby gosh all right now we got to show you the most important part of all of this i have all of my um all of my mounts on this wizard except for two i'm gonna move those over it's the whale that gives you damage stats and then the um is it the motorcycle with 50 percent speed all right we're gonna go around here now this over here is for the beastmen. The beastmen, they really don't know how they ended up here, but you know, here they are and they're kind of stuck here. They can't leave, so they've kind of built themselves their own little empire over here, right? They've got their own nice little setup. This right here alerts the beastmen when someone enters their territory and they can all just kind of attack them and hang them over this and burn them alive and eat them. All right, you've got this over here, so the beastmen they can kind of keep watch. The beastmen slaughtered the people living in these tents whenever they arrived, so now they've got a couple of extra tents and they've got some firewood they can use. All of these jewels keep the beastmen safe from aerial attack. Obviously, the pirates of the skyways, you know they they're pretty dangerous they're a pretty big threat so you gotta keep the beast the beastmen have to stay safe somehow so they strategically chose the best part on the island to do just that all right so now that you've seen the camp it's time to show you the main time to show you why these people chose to stay instead of trying to figure out how to leave obviously if you're if you manage to survive the hostile environment and you manage to set up yourself a decent camp there are some benefits to staying on the island the lamp the magic lamp it has a lot of different spirits inside it these are the spirits of the lamp and depending on what you want or what you need a certain spirit will appear to certain tents around the campsite depending on which lamp you go to you know the spirit will appear to you there um, and each spirit has its own power has its own ability and each spirit can grant you certain things so now we go down into the lair the main area and you've got random shiny lights everywhere and then obviously you've got the nice comfy area in the middle where the uh, magic happens right here so this is just kind of the magic lamp of the castle and this is this is the reason that everyone decides to stay they stick around because they can get anything they want from the magic lamp it comes at a very small price all right they just have to sell their soul so it comes to a, at a very small price and the souls are stored in these little things until they're ready to be burned alive in there and then they're fed to the spirits up there, up there you know and these all the little stars falling from the sky well let's not get into that because that's actually rather gross that that's the um byproduct of the food that we are feeding the souls or that we are feeding the spirits all right now that you guys have seen the nomads camp i would like to know what you guys think about it in the comment section below i invented that backstory i like to invent backstories to all my castles like the um my pyramid is it's a rebels camp and on the inside it's like the elite the uh, kings the rich people they kind of they're warring with the uh, rebels i'll show you guys that one later my sultan's palace is um their allies the sultan is allies with the rebels of the pyramid so the sultan is helping the rebels defeat the rich people of the pyramid my red barn farm doesn't have a story to it it's literally just where i harvest my plants uh the polarian shipwreck is i haven't really come up with a story for that one yet i need to though
Anyway, so yeah, they all kind of have a backstory to them. So we're going to go to the Darkmoor Manor. And we're going to show you around that one. The dark, like I said, the Darkmoor Manor isn't really all that decorated yet, so like, don't laugh at me because that would hurt my feelings. So as you can see, I put some jewels around because they kind of, not for the same reason as the Nomad Camp. The jewels just kind of add a bit of um, creepiness to it, I guess. This is the arena. Again, I haven't decorated this castle very much yet, so it's mostly on the outside. It's mostly just the jewels and all that. And then you've got um, you've got the lights because it's very dark out here, so we've got to have some orb lights everywhere. You know, keep everything well lit so that you don't run into a tree or something while you're walking. Because there's always that one person. It doesn't matter how you know well lit an area is. There is always that one person who will still run into the tree. They will still somehow manage to do that. So I feel like it's better to give them a little bit of help. You know, a little bit. This is my father's manor, a monument to his greed and grandiosity. But he was a fearful man, never took any risks. Here, I'm going to turn the sound on for you guys. Turn this up. I this was my father's manor, a monument to his greed and grandiosity. But he was a fearful man, never took any risks. I ran away and joined the knighthood as soon as I was old enough. All I ever asked of him was that he leave me the family's coat of arms. But, but even in death, he spurned me. All he bequeathed me was text packs, which I care not for. You can have them. Check his sarcophagus. I love how her, um... I love how he left her pet snacks in his will, and they're all in the sarcophagus. So anytime she wants to get a pet snack, or get what her will gives her, I guess, she has to go over to the dead dude's body and, like, take them. Technically, I guess they're mine, though, because she kind of gave them away. I got some random pets out here. I just kind of, I don't know, I didn't want to, didn't know where else to put them, so put them there. More lamps, obviously, like I said, I haven't really decorated this castle very much. For the most part, um, this castle is meant to be a library, so it's, um, it's kind of a place of information, I guess. On the inside, it's obviously it's more decorated. I'm always a lot better at decorating the insides of castles than the outsides. So you've got a bunch of bookcases and you know stuff everywhere, scroll cases. As you can see, I've invested a lot of time in finding these things. The bookshelves are always the hardest ones to get. Like you can get the scroll cases pretty easy from the bazaar, but the bookcases are getting harder to find. I think people actually kind of want to keep the bookcases, the scroll cases. It's harder to fit them in it. Hard to fit them into any kind of theme, you know, because they're like a weird mixture of Crocotopian and Darkmoor. So it's really kind of hard to, you know, figure out what you want to do with them. A little study table over here. I don't know why I put the crafting table here, but, I mean, unless I find somewhere better to put it, it's going to stay there. This might have a couple of... I might make this, like, the official crafting room, too. So, like, if you want to craft stuff in the, ca stuff in the uh, castle. So I guess these uh, bookshelves right here would be would include different recipes for different jewels. Maybe if I put the housing crafting station over here, you know, it'd be part of the story that obviously these books right here would include recipes for castle items. You know, I like to be creative. You know, I like to be imagin imaginative with my castles, at least as much as possible. So obviously you've got this big thing right here. One thing that kind of ticks me off, though, is... The castle itself includes that as a housing item. So like it actually does, it takes up space. And you can't you can't move it, you can't get rid of it, you know. That kinda ticks me off. But honestly, one item is not gonna kill me. I don't know why they did that though. It seems kinda silly, like I don't know, ridiculous. I need to find some statues to put up here. I don't know what I want to go with though. Probably something dark more related, I guess. I've been trying to find some uh, books to put on here, but I need to find something that fits. Because they always kind of stick out, or like the books will be too tall, so they'll kind of, you know, they'll go from one shelf and they kind of like glitch through the top one, the shelf above it. So it looks like the books are ethereal or something. It's, it's really weird. Just a bunch of paintings. 
you know, got a bunch of paintings everywhere, because it's a really nice castle. Honestly, I feel like a lot of these paintings don't really fit. I mean, they've got one from Marleybone here and all that, but it's just random paintings from throughout the spiral that they've decided to collect. Again, it's a um, it's an information castle. It's a library, so they don't discriminate against information. Information's information, man. You can never have too much of it. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it. That, those are my two new castles. Um, the backstories behind them are pretty simple. The Nomad's Camp is a place for, um, you know, it's a place for people who end up stranded there. Or maybe they go there for the jewels. And some of them, that you know, they manage to survive and they become really rich. And others, they figure out that, hey, it's not really the environment for them. And it's a little too hostile, so they end up leaving and they don't really make any kind of profit off of it. Sometimes people just go there to trade with the local merchants. Um, this one right here is obviously it's a library. It's not really complete, so it's not open to the public yet. And uh, it used to belong to some creepy guy named Shane Von Shane or something of that sort. And now it's as you see it. So, tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, be sure to comment, and be sure to subscribe for more amazing, um, for more amazing videos. I hope you guys stick with me throughout my YouTube experience. I will be uploading more Wizard101 videos. I will be continuing my audiobook series. I am sorry for the long delay in video uploading, and there's been many delays. You know, I, I go a few months here and there without uploading any videos, and I really do apologize that apologize for that, but lately I've just been absolutely swamped. I never thought that this that I'd be this busy. Like, I never thought that would be possible. You know, when you actually get, like, a an official job, and then whenever you start getting ready to move out, you know, before any of that's happening in your life, you think, okay, well, I'll have all this time, obviously. I mean, uploading one or two videos, you know, every day or even once a week, is, it'll, it'll be easy, right? But when you've got all this stuff to do and it's just on your mind constantly, it actually gets really hard to upload videos. In fact, it gets hard to think of videos to upload to begin with. You're just like, okay, I don't really want to upload a video today. And even if I did, I don't know what I would do it about. So it, it becomes really hard. And then you try and make a video and you're just so tired and worn out and it ends up coming out all crappy. And you're like, oh, I'm not uploading that. So you just you end up procrastinating to the point where like three months later, you're like, I've got to get a video. You know, I've got to get one done. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. I'll see you guys later. You will be seeing another video from me. Um, now that my life is starting to slow down a little bit more, you will be seeing another video from me. In between the in between March 10th and March 15th, my life will speed up a lot. Like all of a sudden, it'll just kind of amp up. So I probably won't be uploading videos for about a week in that time period. But you know. I'll try and keep it constant or as constant as I possibly can. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.